Welcome to Pharmacomania. Evidence-based medicine. In today's era, we are practicing evidence-based medicine. So, what is evidence-based medicine? Evidence-based medicine is the integration of best research evidence with clinical expertise and patient's value. This is integration of clinical clinical expertise, research evidence, and patient's preference. So, where do we go for help with decision when we are not sure how to proceed for our patient? This is evidence pyramid. Here, in base, expert opinion or case report. We can get advice from expert colleague or we can go for further research like case report, case series, descriptive studies, experimental studies, case control study, cohort study, randomized clinical trial or randomized clinical trial systematic review with or without meta-analysis. These are the various evidence base uh, trial and we can get support from this evidence. So, clinical studies are basically following types, clinical trials, cohort studies and case control studies. Clinical trial is a prospective ethical design investigation in the human subject to objectively discover, verify, or compare the result of two groups. Control trial is the inclusion of proper comparator, like control group, we can use as the placebo as a control group, or we can compare the drug with the existing standard treatment. Randomized clinical trial, the subject are allocated to either group using pre-selected random number tables or computer programs so that any subject has equal chances of being assigned to the test drug or control drug group. Cohort study, this is a type of observational study in which no intervention for the sake of the study is done. Cohort is the group of individuals having same common feature in the context of drug research. The common feature is that all study subjects have taken particular drug occurrence of event like beneficial or adverse event in user and non-user of the drug is compared. Prescription event monitoring is cohort study. The cohort study can be prospective or retrospective in the prospective design. Case control study is the type of observational study is used mainly to reveal association of the suspected rate adverse event with the use of particular drug. Case of the suspected adverse event that is acranocytosis are collected from the hospital case record disease register or disease register. Now, meta-analysis, which data from the several similar conducted randomized controlled trial with the same drug or class of the same class of the drugs examine the same clinical endpoint is pulled to bring out the overall balance of evidence by enlarging the number of test and control study, control subject and increasing the significance and power of conclusion. Which study is most in the grade 1 systematic review and meta-analysis? Meta it is most reliable, may form the basis of clinical decision. Grade 2 is well-powered randomized control trial, more than one trial. It is reliable but may be supported or refuted by similar studies. Grade 3 studies open label trial, pilot studies, observational studies and prospective or retrospective studies, observational, prospective and retrospective studies. These are re less reliable, 
need more rigorous testing may indicate further investigation and type 4 is the case report and it is least reliable five step approach to practicing evidence based medicine first step is the framing a proper pertinent focused and answerable question so first of all you have to uh, framing a proper question step 2 is the searching the literature after framing the question you have to search for that question and go with the review of literature and third is the critical appraisal of the literature fourth one is the integrating the evidence with clinic, clinical expertise and patient value and last is the evaluating the process after completing all this process we have to evaluate the process how that proceeded evidence based medicine method so first of all assess your patient ask the clinical question acquire the best evidence appraise the evidence and apply the evidence on your patient after framing the question you have to search for literature it can be searched from traditional print resources like textbook and journals or browse online electronic databases third step is critical appraisal of literature screening for internal validity and relevance determining the intent of the article and evaluate the validity based on its intent step 4 integrating the evidence with clinical expertise and patient value the best document critically appraise the research evidence is already with the clinician take into consideration the patient value for example the patient is a precious known male child of a parent the economical financial status of the parents doesn't permit to expensive therapies so no contraindication for the drug to be administered and drug should be administered with low doses like 16th of the high dose can be administered evaluating the process how will you evaluate the process was he able to formulate focus question was he able to advise and precise research strategy for locating the evidence did he use the most appropriate resources were more pertinent resource like practice guidelines available to him did the evidence work in his patient the clinician should document the outcome of the application of evidence and based on his experience those of his colleagues should be able to develop and manage protocol so what are the benefit of adopting evidence based medicine due to evidence based medicine minimize the error in the patient care reduce the cost of the treatment optimize the quality of patient care skill learn in practicing evidence based medicine are very same same as uh, same ones needed for being lifelong self directed directed learner habit of assessing literature on the daily basis is the best guarantor of ensuring advancement of knowledge and keeping abreast of scientific knowledge so this is one example for evidence based medicine patient a is a 60 year old presenting with one hour of retro sternal chest pain ecg shows lateral st elevation consistent with acute mi so patient is of mi acute mi and our question is the in this patient with acute MI, does treatment with aspirin reduce mortality? If we are prescribed aspirin in this condition after one hour of retrosternal chest pain, diagnosis is confirmed, 
acute MI. So, can we give aspirin to reduce mortality in this condition? What is the best evidence? Let's see. In 1988, reduction of mortality in acute MI infection with streptokinase and aspirin therapy results were patient with acute MI treated with aspirin versus placebo had significant 23% relative risk reduction in 5-week cardiovascular mortality with absolute risk reduction of 11.8 to 9.4%. In second study, the combination of streptokinase and aspirin resulted in a 42% relative risk reduction in cardiovascular mortality after 5 weeks or compared to compared with the placebo. In 1997, how many patients received aspirin follow, following acute myocardial infarction? Aspirin was not given to 55% patient. 78% of patients who did not uh, did receive aspirin received it more than 30 minutes after arrival to the emergency department. But as late as 2000, even in US, aspirin was being prescribed for at most one third of the patient with coronary artery disease. Relatively simple and cheap practice shows that we have a problem in getting provident, a provider to apply knowledge gained through research. The paradigm for translation of new information from research bench to bedside has been accept, uh, concept as a translational highway. Thank you for watching this video.